Hi, I'm Roxy Rose, and I'm back again doing another video. Um, if you haven't seen my other videos, please have a look. Uh, most of the videos that I make have to do with transitioning late in life, although um, a lot of the uh, situations that we have to contend with are universal situations, you know, for the young and old. But, um, you know, us older ladies, um, you know, our bodies are getting old, and they're trying to fall apart at the same time. We're just now starting to put them back together in the right order. So it is quite difficult, you know. Um, and today we're going to be talking about passing or being clocked. Oh, God. And I'll state it right up front. It's happened to me many times. And each time it's like a dagger being stuck into my chest. It just, it hurts every time it happens. And... And no matter how good I'm feeling about myself, it's just, it's just the worst feeling. Um, but um, I want to talk to you a little bit about it and hopefully uh, be a little encouraging. Because um, I know we all have to contend with that sort of thing out in public. There's a group of people out there that are just, excuse my language, but they're just a-holes. And they're just a waste of, you know a waste of life really and they just love to, ca to cause trouble um, those people are everywhere and they're not only causing trouble for you as the trans woman but they're causing trouble for different ethnic groups they're causing trouble for people that are, have disabilities and they're causing trouble with anybody they feel is weaker and susceptible to being picked on and that's just who they are and I can't really talk to you about those people because the problem lies within those people, not you, not really even society. But then there is this clocking that goes on, um, you know, when you're in line and somebody serves you or, um, or somebody, uh, you know, asks, has to ask your gender um, or, or stumbles over your gender when they're talking to you. Um, or then some people just come out and, you know, say something. But um, uh, what I want to tell you is a lot of times it's really, really not your fault. And I'm not just trying to be encouraging there. There is a scientific explanation for it, really. You know that day that you, the, the night before you had this really wonderful bath and your nails are done just perfectly and that morning your hair is done and everything just goes together and you feel really great and you go outside, you're having this great old day and somebody clocks you. Now, that just going to send you into a downward spiral. I know it does me every time. But there is a scientific explanation for for some of these clockings that go on when you're feeling so good about yourself. Um, you know, for when you're a baby, um, you don't understand clothing, makeup, hair, and all that sort of stuff. So you learn from a very early age, lying on your back inside of a crib, staring up at all these funny adults up there. You learn how to determine facial structure from a very early age. It's because, you know, men tend to be less nurturing and women tend to be more nurturing. So naturally, you're going to pick out the uh, more feminine face and, you know, hopefully focus your attention on them so they'll pick you up because you know that's more likely to happen uh, with the more feminine face, the person that, you know, owns that more feminine face. So you as a child um, learn facial structure. Um, and and then we as adults have this facial structure. But not always um, do you get clocked. And then sometimes you get clocked on your best day. Well, I'll explain that. When you're an infant and you're learning facial structure, depending on your ethnic group and depending on your relatives. I mean, you, you could be from a Norwegian family. And therefore, um, you know, like my eye sockets are just like my grandmother's, who was Norwegian. And I'm Norwegian from descent, too. Um, so a, a, a fairly defined jawline may be characteristic in your family. So that person that is an infant learning facial structure See, sees a, a strong jawline as, as not a, not a um, masculine characteristic if that runs 
in their family. On the other hand, if a big chin or a strong jawline runs in the masculine side of their family, well then they learn early on uh, that that uh, indicates a masculine person. So what I'm what I'm trying to say is so that day that you're out there and there could be two people walking side by side and one of them's going to clock you and the other one is going to think you're a pretty gorgeous lady. Now that's because the one person that clocks you you may coincidentally or unfortunately you may have some facial features that are embedded in their psyche that to tell them that's masculine. And there's no erasing that once it's in their psyche. So to you, you're going to stand out to them. To the person walking next to them, who may have um, seen your characteristics early on in her childhood or infancy, on a feminine face, she's going to be completely oblivious to what your, um, you, you know, what those things are, and she's going to think you're just a gorgeous lady. So, um, so that happens, and you just need to know that that is sometimes the case. That is why you're feeling so great, and, um, and, and you feel like you're just perfectly made up, and somebody clocks you. Well, it's not your fault. It just coincidentally or unfortunately, you just happened upon the wrong person, and they may or may not have been trying to be rude. But to them, like I said, your facial structure indicates uh, maybe a masculine person. So, you know, the, and, and facial structure is something that, you know, uh, is very difficult to work on. Um, there's makeup tips that you could, um, you know, learn about that could help conceal some of these things. And then there's uh, facial feminization surgery. Um, costly, and uh, not all of us trans girls want to go through that sort of stuff, especially this time in our life. Um, so, I wanted to explain that to you. And, and, and I'm going to tell you a situation that just happened to me. Well, not just, but a, a while back, I was shopping at a thrift store because I love those thrift stores. You know Roxy Rose. She's a bargain hunter. Um, but I was shopping in this thrift store, and three um, people started walking my direction. We were kind of just going in opposite directions within the store. And they were in their 20s. There was two guys and one girl. And they were respectable-looking people, uh, not the troublemaking kind. And as we got really close, one guy comes up directly up to me and looks me right in the face and says, Ma'am, I just have to tell you, you are a beautiful, sexy woman. And then he continues walking. Well, the girl that's standing next to him gives him a little nudge and says, Ronnie, that isn't even a girl. And and the funny thing is I hear them arguing about it all the way out the store, whether or not, you know, I was a trans woman. So what happened there? Well, there was a few things. Well, one, you know, guys kind of tend to focus down here. But this guy walked right up to me, looked me in the face, and then said what he had to say. You know, he was... You know, I was flattered by that, and I said thanks and just continued on my way. Now, the girl, though, well, naturally, she was probably offended at this guy taking the time to show me some interest, and who knows, maybe, you know, her and him, I don't know, maybe there was something going on there. But then what, what happened with her, you know, um, she then decided to study me intently, which is, that you know, that's the sad part of it. I wish none of this would have happened. I would have rather foregone the uh, compliment if I could have also foregone her studying me intently, trying to find something wrong with me, which she did. And, uh, and, and obviously, um, well, you know, I'm not going to say she's correct, but, you know, she spotted something that she could, um, you know, call me on. Uh, but, you know, those things happen, and like I said, each time, it's just like sticking a dagger in your chest, and I know it is, and I feel for you when that happens, but, but understand that sometimes it's just science, it's just how that person grew up, what's in their psyche, the telltale signs, and then there's so many other people that are so 
uh, that don't have the same psyche as those people. So, so really, don't worry about it too much. And um, you're out there, and you're transitioning, and um, you're out there for yourself. And we didn't do this for anyone else. We did this for ourselves. And I'm sure if you're like me, when you considered doing this in middle age, you knew there were a lot of obstacles to overcome. And you also weighed in on the, on the, on the matter that you might not be passable. I know I did. And I also thought to myself, well, even if I'm not passable, I'm going to be much happier being able to express myself in this manner than I would be cooped up in the closet as I have been all these years. So keep reminding yourself that you're out there for yourself, not for anybody else. And even if you don't pass on that day, you're much happier out there expressing yourself this way than you would be in the closet. You're much happier that way. That's when we start transition, we all go through that process and we all consider that can be an issue. So the key is to be happy with yourself. Don't pay attention to those a-holes. They're out there causing trouble for everybody. But on those days that you do get clocked, you know, be happy and remind yourself that you're there for yourself and not for anybody else. And I know it hurts and it hurts me too. And uh, just just go out there, be yourself, and be happy because you owe it to yourself. You know, you all the, for if you were transgender all your life and in the closet all your life. My God, girl, you're a wonderful person, and you owe it to yourself to be happy. And who cares about those people out there? So take heart and be happy with yourself and remember that it doesn't have to do with your makeup and it doesn't have to do with you sometimes it's just that person okay well this has been Roxy Rose um, with another edition of transitioning late in life in particularly um, talking about uh, being clocked and uh, passing so look at my other videos tell me what you think email me on YouTube you could email me or any of the other websites um, I try to get to your uh, email sometimes I get a little behind um, but you could email me directly if you like um, that's uh, myroxyrose at gmail.com that's m-y-r-o-x-y-r-o-s-e at gmail.com or, um, like I said, send a note through YouTube or something. And I look forward to seeing you on another video. Bye-bye.